Hey YouTube, would you just give me a copy of the new Grain Science for review? And I had some very high expectations for this one, but it exceeded them all. I have been very pleased with this. Granular synthesis is basically the idea of taking a wavetable or a sample and cutting little slices of it and playing around with those grains. And grain science takes the very logical approach that in order to do any of that, you should probably have a really solid synthesis engine devoted to wavetables. And grain science does that. It is so good. It's just a solid wavetable synth. And I'll play some non-granular science or otherwise uh, kind of dancey sounding stuff here. Trancy sounds, but none of that is any granular stuff. If you look over here, and this is just a saw wave right here on grain unit one and a sign on grain unit two. Let me show you another basic little patch here. Trust no one. sounds amazing and it's not doing any kind of weird shit like a lot of these grain synthesizers will try to do where it's trying to be you know experimental and edgy and all this right this is just straight up synthesis here with a wavetable and it's playing around with the size of the sample and a slight lfo that's playing around with the tunings but other than that it's just straight up synthesis and i found this to be hugely inspiring so i went and did my own little thing here And once again, this is just using typical waveforms here. We've got a soft square and a saw. And uh, once again, I'm playing with the tuning just marginally, is a range of 0.25% with an LFO. And this right here is the Do Science panel. And if you select things, you get icons. Like in this case, this has only got the uh, granularity icon for how much resolution you want when you're moving the knob. You see right now I'm moving my finger all over the place, but it's barely moving at all. And here it's moving much faster. But on other things, if you see the science button, you can click that and do science. And in this case, you can throw in something that will change over time. So I can say, I want this to start off over here at 100% on grain unit one and end all the way over on green unit two and say I want maybe three seconds to cross fade between the two of them. And you can change the mode that it's playing around with these different grain units as well. Uh, one that's really interesting is modulate. So now grain unit two over here, which was my saw is acting as a modulation for the amplitude of grain unit one. And the amount is governed by our science over here, which you see has now changed it to this zero to 100% instead of all that other stuff that I had set up when it was on crossfade mode. But if I go back to crossfade mode, it goes back to the way I had it with 100% over on unit one and then 100% on unit two. So let me go back into the uh, modulate so you can hear this. I've been having a lot of fun just tweaking around with this. There's also a multiply mode, which is kind of like a ring mod, I guess. Or you can do straight up mixing in. It starts off with all of grain unit one and then we'll mix in grain unit two on top of it. Listen to how that sounds and it's so incredible. And if you want to get into the, the grainy parts, there's even more fun to be had here because we can take this wavetable now and start to take out different slices of it. So uh, let me switch it back into a crossfade mode and I'm going to change my blend mode to stop doing science. And now it's all the way over onto a hundred percent of unit one. So I can play around with this and listen to how this sounds as I play with the speed. Fucking love this thing. See, 
see how we're getting entirely different tonal and harmonic qualities without playing with the tune or the octave or anything like that. We're just playing with the speed of the playback of this wavetable. And I'm just so impressed with how good everything sounds and how logical everything is. Because as you're playing around with this, you might think to yourself, well, hey, you know, I want to play with this tuning some more. You just click the science thing and now you've got instant modulations for that one parameter that you can assign in all kinds of different crazy ways. In addition to our typical synthesis here with our oscillators and envelopes, we've got a arpeggiator, which can be in chord mode or step sequencer. And you can just play around with this like this or uh, double click on something to kill that step. And you also have four different effects units, and, and these are pretty interesting. I really like this warm fuzz. No fuzz. Warm fuzz. And you can assign all kinds of great stuff here. We got pit crushers, a hard clipper. As well as overdrive and both high and low pass filters, flangers, phasers, and uh, tube residents, and this uh, digital echo, which is also a lot of fun. But you've also got a whole section dedicated just to reverb, and this is very elaborate with all kinds of different reverb modes available to you. And over on the connection mapper, you'll see that we've got all kinds of different assignments that we can make to these XY pads or wheels or to any MIDI controller. So let me throw in a low pass filter on this. And you'll see now the low pass filter is lit up and I can assign to the frequency and it uh, can easily be assigned to any of the pads or controls on the app itself. Or as you see right here, it invites you to adjust a MIDI control and it will simply learn it just by you playing around with a knob. Uh, so I've got my keyboard hooked up. I'll play with a knob here and it, it's instantly assigned here. I can switch that around. It instantly picks up, okay, I want this to be assigned here. Let me do the same thing for resonance now. And you see we have a maximum minimum range so I can prevent it from self oscillating. So if I go back to the effects screen, you see as I play around with the knobs on my keyboard, you get instant feedback on the screen here and I cannot push the resonance past what I've said as the cutoff. You see these max out over here, but this one's maxing out right here. But if you're running around and you don't have your keyboard handy, you can easily set it to one of the onboard XY pads here. And it's as easy as selecting this and hitting X. And you can make use of the auto reset feature, which I'll show you here in a second. It's really cool. You can't do that when it's on a MIDI controller. But as I set it to the XY pad, I can turn on auto reset. And what that does is as I'm playing this, as soon as I let go of the XY pad, it goes back to whatever the screen positions are at. And this is so well thought out. Little things like the dry wet on the low pass makes managing these really complex patches so much easier when you can say, well, hey, you know, I, I want the low pass, but I want too much of the low pass, you know? It's really very clever. But let's get on to the actual granularity stuff. What most people do when they get any kind of granular synth is record themselves saying something goofy and then playing around with that. And I am no exception to this rule. Good intentions, good intentions, good As you hear there, I've got myself recorded on this panel saying good intentions. And I'm playing around with the speed of the little bit and the size of the grain. And over on the second grain unit, I imported a little sample from Animog. And that is a process that is made very easy by all of these different import options you get here, uh, including uh, from your iTunes file sharing or even Dropbox. And not just from audio copy paste, but also from the general pasteboard for apps that don't support audio copy paste. So it's really easy to get anything you want into this thing here. And once you have it imported, you've got it here that you can now play with in a non-destructive manner, such as setting a soft loop mode, which does a crossfade between the beginning and ends of your sample. So in this case, this sample, when I switch it back to linear mode, which means it will play all the way through and we set the blending all the way over to this. We got a real grindy sort of sound. And if I change the mode to bounce, 
it's trying to play it forward and then backwards or chaos where it takes whatever size you have over here and we'll grab little slices of that size and play different random slices so note that the speed setting doesn't do anything in chaos mode uh, and then there's single shot where it'll just play one slice and that's it I've been having a lot of fun with static though, because you get this one little grain and you get to play and tweak with it as much as you like. I found this to be a really inspiring app. The inclusion of small details like the core MIDI stuff I showed you and just the overall polish on this thing makes it feel very professional. If you're the kind of person that got excited when I first showed you the modulations available here on the science panel, then you absolutely should get this because there is so much to explore in here.